buildings, shops, and restaurants, people, and traffic. A street is the heartbeat of a city. Here a door opens on local life. History is brought into the present. Travelogue takes you on a tour of the streets of some of China's towns and cities. Travel with Travelogue. Welcome to Travelogue, I'm Liu Changying. In this episode, we continue our street special. And we're here at the ancient city of Nanjing, which means the southern capital. It is the meaning is right opposite to Beijing, which means the northern capital. Let's wander on the streets of Nanjing together. Welcome to Nanjing. Boasting a prestigious imperial past, serving as inspiration for many poets, the city of Nanjing is the place where you can get really close to history. I mean really, really close. It sits on the lower reaches of the Yangtze River, a strategic position of such importance that six ancient dynasties had made Nanjing its capital city. Today, Nanjing is the sprawling capital of Jiangsu province, with a population of over 6 million people. We are going to show you Nanjing through three special streets, the Yudaojie Street, the Changjiang Street, and the Gaochun Old Street, which is over one hour's drive from downtown Nanjing. One of the oldest streets in Nanjing is called Yu Dao Jie, which means the Royal Pathway Street. During Ming Dynasty, before the emperor moved the uh, capital to north to Beijing, all the important ministries like the military, the superior court, they were all lined along that street. And now we've just entered Wu Men, which means the Meridian Gate. So I'm walking on the six meter wide stone pavement. This was reserved only for the royal family and very high ranking officials. This means only those people could use that gate. Entering Wuman, you leave behind the traffic of modern times and enter the imperial city of the Ming Dynasty. Inside the Gate of Women is another small open-air museum where people keep a small garden-like space to display some of the stone architectural elements. So remember, this is the Royal Pathway Road. It links to the Imperial City and the Palace City, which was surrounded by high walls. Unfortunately, these walls are already gone. But fortunately, the outer city wall, which surrounds the whole Nanjing city, much of it still remains standing. And here we are at this little corner, right beside the famous Jiangwu Lake. The outer city wall was built along a natural river, so it doesn't go in a straight way. And the river served as a kind of a natural moat. That side is outer city, and that side is inside the city. Of course, today the city of Nanjing has long ground sprawling out of the city wall. So, they have the city wall right inside the city of Nanjing. Quite a treasure, isn't it?
The outer city wall is acclaimed as the longest city wall in China. Standing with a height between 14 to 21 meters, it stretches over 33 kilometers, and most of its parts still remain standing amid the city of Nanjing. A responsibility system ensures the quality of each brick. Nanchang Ti Diao Guan. Well, to be honest, I don't recognize every character on that brick. But one thing's for sure is that it's uh, recorded names of the site of production and the title of official who was overseeing the production of these bricks. And on the other side of the brick, like this one, um, people wrote particular names of particular workers who worked on this particular brick. After over 600 years, these stone walls still stand here silently as the valid witnesses to the passing of time, though the face of the city has long changed. Today, with high rises and skyscrapers, the skyline of Nanjing has changed much. Like many other cities around the country, old narrow alleyways like this are disappearing. But here in Nanjing, if you look carefully, you can still find old alley alleyways and along which old, old buildings that give you a sense of how the city used to be like. I've just entered Gan Jia Da Yuan, former residence of the Gan family. The huge compound wasn't built in one day, but was gradually expanded over years through several generations. The most famous figure in the family is a man named Gan Xi, a scholar of Qing Dynasty. The massive wooden decoration and the scale of the residence tell tales the affluence of the family. So the home is basically made up of structures and courtyards. And I just love courtyards in southern China. People pave it with all kinds of patterns, with pebble stones and bricks. And this courtyard is paved with bricks, like this one. But it's not the usual way we see. It's not paved with a brick lying down the ground. The brick stands like this. So we have this thick a pavement on the courtyard, under my feet, very strong and endurable. Above that, this courtyard never floods during summer's time, even though it rains a lot here in Nanjing, because it has a very good drainage system. Here, there are four wells at the four corners of the courtyard. This is actually a well. When summer's time, when it rains, the water goes through this well to the underground drainage system. Some people say people of today can't make such good drainage system anymore. A gun residence has a total of over 300 rooms, but people only say it has 99 and a half. Why? One explanation is that during the Qing Dynasty, nobody was supposed to own a home with over 100 rooms, except the royals. So no matter how large you made your home, you could only say you had 99 and a half rooms. Basically, such grand home complex is composed of many small courtyards that are linked with one another. Pushing a window open, I tried to picture a life here. It was a time when girls were not supposed to leave the courtyard, especially the girls from such a rich, influential family. And the narrow alleyways were once busy with servants hurriedly running errands. that you hear such kind of music in such kind of houses. 
The Gant family was famous for their artistic talent. It is said, by the end of the Qing Dynasty, the few hundred people in the family, each one of them could play a musical instrument. And they're mostly fond of Qingqi, a particular kind of local opera. Today, many people still come here and gather together to practice Kunqi. They call themselves friends of Kunqi. These amateur Kunqi singers meet here every weekend in the old residence. I was surprised to find one foreign face among them. I've always had a, a form of theatrical performance and uh -huh. of music in my life uh -huh. and so when I came to Nanjing it was natural for me to look for a way to to include uh, uh -huh. theater and uh -huh. music in my life and uh, Quinji is the most beautiful form of opera in China. How does it attract you? Well it's it's slower than most forms of Chinese opera and it's it's more emotive. For me a lot of a lot of the other kinds of Chinese opera are very rapid uh -huh. and very martial a lot of war stories and Kunji, if you look at things like Mudan Ting, and they're, they're mostly love stories, a lot of solos, very long, uh, protracted, and, and, and because of that, they, they have a, a greater emotional power. And the texts are very beautiful as well. With a history of over 600 years, Kunji is one of the finest and oldest forms of local operas in China. Somehow, the slow melody just matches the old houses and rooms, which are full of untold memories and stories. For a taste of the local flavors, one recommendation is the Shi Zi Qiao Street in conjunction of Hunan Lu Street. Here, the Nanjing Da Pai Dang restaurant is one good choice. Its deliberate antique decorations, as well as the furniture, indicate a clear vow to provide a flavor that is 100% indigenous. There are so many local delicacies that, but I can only recommend a few. So here we are. This one is called Shi Zi Tou, literal translation would be the head of a line. And this, root of lotus, stuffed with rice. And this is called Lu Hao, something only available around Nanjing area. And the last one is called Tang Yu Miao, actually it's little taro, something like a sweet dessert. I've got to try this one first. Early morning is the time a city reveals its natural beauty. Before it disguises itself in the artificial makeup of traffic jams and noisy crowds. That's why I chose to get up early to do some jogging, to get a glimpse of the local life in Nanjing. But jogging is probably the most boring exercise in Nanjing. This little bamboo toy is called Zhu Ming It stimulates your waist, arms, and even your ears. And the prize for most beautiful sight still goes to the wonderful practice of the Tai Chi sword. You can find groups of people practicing along the road. Obviously, you don't get this good with only one or two days of practice. The morning market usually only opens along the Yu Dao Street between 6 and 7.30. The farmers from nearby come to sell their fresh vegetables and other household items. 
一块两毛吧，一块两毛。哇、wow, ， very cheap and very fresh。The old saying that the early bird gets the worm holds true here. This is the Chinese version of fast food. Convenient, in multiple choices, and ready in an instant, such roadside food stands are a blessing for anyone hurrying on their way to work. Even in the winter's time, the streets in Nanjing still look pretty. However, walking on the modern street of Nanjing amidst the traffic, it's hard to imagine the city's former glory. I went to the Nanjing Bo Wu Yuan or Nanjing Museum to find one thing that most colorfully represents the past: the wonderful Yun Brocade. At the museum. Mr. Jin Wen kindly served as my tour guide to give me a rudimentary explanation about the complex ancient skills. Yun means cloud, and the Yun Jin literally means a brocade as beautiful as the clouds. The Yun brocade was only made for the royal family. Ordinary people wouldn't even have the luxury of looking at them. Yun Jin's work is in the past. 这个历史上也是是一个顶峰阶段的，所以说特别高级。啊，你看像这这样的云顶之梯，那么上面一个人我们称为提花或者枝子啊，他他是主要是把这个纹样提起来。下面一个人是织造，织造呢它有两个功能，一个要通过这个织物的基组织和断织物造做出来，那么同时呢，他还要把这个颜色织进去。The weaving procedure is complicated even to look at. And to know how complicated it is, one day's non-stop work can only produce only five centimeters of brocade. Not only do people care about the colors and the shine of the fabric, but even the sound the skirts make counts. Imagine how I would sound wearing a dress like this and walk by. Notice how the textile glimmers. Different lighting brings out different shades of royal gold. Mr. Jin Wen also ventures into renovating the old patterns of Yun brocade to suit modern tastes. His studio even produces brocade with styles and designs that cater to the Westerner's eyes. Administrations had made Nanjing the seat of their capital. Among them, the Kuomintang government was the last one. Along this road, the Changjiang Road, which was named after the famous Yangtze River, you can still find many architectures built during that period, a very special time span in China's history. You could still find many buildings from that period, a time when the Western influences. Including the notion of democracy and science, gradually swept into the Middle Kingdom. The changes of the mindset was reflected in the changes of architectural style. It was a most turbulent period of time in China, when the country was torn with civil war and countless revolutions. The Changjiang Road bore witness to one of the most important moments in China's modern history, when the PLA took over the presidential palace, marking the defeat of the Kuomintang government, which was headed by Chiang Kai-shek. He had by then long lost the trust of the Chinese general public. However, the presidential palace also commemorates a well-respected president, the first president. In China's history, Doctor Sun Yat-sen. A 
On January the 1st, 1912, at 10 o'clock in the evening, Dr. Sun Yat-sen stood there and gave a short, brief speech, officially sworn in as the provincial president, marking a new era in China's history. Although Dr. Sun remained in office only for a very short time, 91 days in total, his presidency marked the end of the several thousand years long feudal system in China. And this building is where Dr. Sun Yat-sen lived during that 91 days. Guess what this is for? We have some water in this utensil made of stone. Actually, this is for you to keep goldfish. It is, in fact, a gift from overseas Chinese to congratulate Dr. Sun Yat-sen for his swearing in as provincial president. The streets in Nanjing are wide avenues with planted trees. But now we are here at one and a half hours away from Nanjing City at the old streets of Gaochun. We'll see what the streets used to be like. The streets here are very much different from the avenues in Nanjing. The basic structure of the streets and buildings along the road still serve the same purposes they did in the old time. This is a small workshop that produces a kind of sweet cake made from rice powder. The freshly made ones are especially tasty and moist. Hey, that's what I'm looking for. The ancient well. They have a little sign over here. Here it is. Wow, what a nice well. here it all comes from people pulling the well the bucket out of the well wow really some water from the ancient well people still use it to wash the vegetables and clothes but you're not supposed to pull the water back into the well so I'm going to um, uh, water some plants Many of the buildings bear a unique signature local architectural feature, a drum-like decoration called Xi Gu. The old street is like a living museum, but it has its own folk art museum, like this one. On exhibition here are pictures of Taoism gods. Each one of them represents a star. Followers of Taoism study mystic sciences, such as astrology and alchemy. Each of these gods had his or her own characters and duties. For example, the North Star of Xuanwu is represented by a bull. And the goddess of the moon is supposed to be in charge of marriage. Besides the stars, the religion has a myriad of gods that are much forgotten in the modern days. It's a surprise to find so many of such precious relics carefully preserved in the small town. The collection here is supposedly the largest of its kind in China. Also on display in this small museum are a number of well-known stone, wood, and brick sculptures. They were collected from nearby villages were just on this old street of Gaochun. It's 
it's hard to get the true essence of a place just by a swirl-like visit. Not a small street like the Gaochun, not to mention the big city of Nanjing. But somehow, I think I've managed to grasp a little bit of it, and I hope you've experienced it as well from watching our show. Actually, there's nothing exotic or very exciting about Nanjing. Everything's loaded with history and very traditional. But somehow, I feel myself falling in love with the city after just a few days here. It is said the summer's time in Nanjing is very, very hot. But I'm definitely coming back on a summer's day and to see all the streets covered with green, green leaves. This is Travelog, and you're watching Street Special in Nanjing. I'm Liu Changying. I'll see you around.